if you've got a wheel bearing that sounds very much like a train on a train track, so the, the, the bearings are grumbling, the chances are that your wheel bearings are a bit tired and the shims that they sit on are also probably rusty. So we're going to take this, the, I've taken the wheel off this and we're going to take the, the cap off the end, have a look inside. You can already see that the, the pin here is rusty and that can cause, if that actually rusts, it means that the nut here that's, that's, that it's holding from stopping from rotating called the castle nut can rotate as you go down the road and it can make the wheel seize. Now we can make this, this, this job can be easy or hard because when we've taken the bearings out of this one we could try and replace the bearings and the shims in the hub or as I'm going to do with you now just I'm going to change the whole hub for a shiny new one with shiny new bearings on the inside and a complete set and it's about the same price as just changing the bearings and the shims and a lot easier. So what I've done now is I've just straightened the pin, I'm going to tap it out The pin's out, it's a bit rusty, might be able to use it again, you never know. I'm going to try and take this nut off. It's called a castle nut because it's got turrets, and it's the turrets with the pin through it that stop the nut from turning. This is an old milk bottle top, drop the dirty bits into that. and. With any luck, we can remove the hub. It's coming slowly. Okay, your hub's fallen off, or come off in your hand, and we can actually just have a look to see what condition it's in. With the hub, you've got the outer bearing race, with a washer holding the outer bearing race against the shim on the in inside. You can see what colour that shim looks like now. Uh, they say if it's pitted it's probably worn out. And we can see on this one that it, it's quite pitted on the inside. So that's, that's basically rusty. You'll hear that grumbling along. The inner ball race is still on the shank and it's usually got uh, sort of a rubber seal around it to try and hang on to the, the grease inside the bearing rather than splatter all over your boat cover. And that's come off the shank. So there's your inner ball race and your outer ball race. We've also already just seen that it's, it's pitted and it's time to change it. We could change the ball races and the shims, but that's a really tricky job to align the races in the, in the hub. So it's probably better just to change the whole hub for a shiny new one. So I'll just clear up, clean up the, the shaft first. Now I'm changing gloves just because I don't want to contaminate the bearings with the dirt from the old ones as it'd be pointless changing the bearings in the first place. So you're meant to pack your bearings. That doesn't mean just shove them in and then hope that the bearing, the, the grease we pump into the new hub because the new hub has a grease nipple on it. it just hope it goes through the bearings. You're meant to actually pack the bearings. So you're meant to squeeze the grease into each part of the bearing and that preloads and packs the bearing. So there's your bearing packed. And if we're certain, I'm going to use a bit of grease to try and help clean the rest of this shaft off to make sure it really is clean. If you're certain that your shaft is the operating part is clean. We can put our packed bearing onto our shaft. Okay. Then we take our hub, studs facing outwards, onto our packed bearing. Okay. We've got to pack the outer bearing too. Stay there. Pack the outer bearing. don't want it to run dry at all so even when the grease is pumped through it 
it can leave some holes so it's good to pre-pack that bearing. That's going to go in tapered inwards. Okay, and then the next bit we're going to not forget is the washer because that's the only thing that holds that bearing together. And the last bit that holds it all there is the castle nut. Now, you can see from this drive shaft here that the hole in this shaft, I'll get the pin, is at that angle there. Okay, so there's only one hole in this shaft and it's that angle, so just remember that. Pop your nut on. This is the bit that most explanations of fitting bearings tend to like to gloss over. This is the bit that perhaps the best answer is to phone a dad. So you can tighten this bearing until it starts to bind and if you have an over tightened bearing you know there's binding going on there's overheating and it doesn't work. You have it too loose and the bearing starts to rattle and that wears out as well. And the dad, the dad answer is tighten it till it binds. And I'm lo looking where my castle nut is lining up. There's my hole. That's binding. The dad answer is come back one flat. Okay? And that should be the bearings loose. That's the dad answer. That's the best answer I can find. And then you put your pin back in again that locates the nut. There's your split pin that stops that castle nut from rotating, so it's in the right place. You might need some snipe nose pliers just to split it and twist it. Okay, bearing changed. Last job, obviously, um, is to refit your hubcap. And um, I guess what I could do, first of all, is go, I could actually use the, the grease nipple and just to see how the grease nipple is going into the bearing, just to make sure it's going in. So you might see, a, might see the grease coming through the bearing. So there's a lot of hollow in there, which has got to pack through eventually. It'll start coming through that bearing. There it comes. We can now pop our new super clean cap on the outside. And you've got one perfectly changed bearing. What I'd advise you to do is check on this bearing, you know, after the first 100 miles just to make sure that it isn't gone too loose or that it started to bind again and just go back to adjusting your flat to get it in the right place. But it's so easy for, for the, about the same money as just changing the bearings and the shims. You get the whole hub, whole new set of nuts and, you know, new grease nipple and it all works a treat. Just a quick tip for putting your wheel on. You've got a little gap here, which is where the the um, grease nipple has to sit, so make sure your gap goes over your grease nipple else you'll damage it. And then a little tip from my dad again as usual, it's uh, putting nuts on and tightening them up. This is the key bit to this bit of the, the video really. And that is that you're really meant to tighten your nuts up north, south, east, west, not go round in a circle. Um, I don't know how crucial it is, but uh, I think if I've read it on other internet sites, it suggests it's quite important. So when you are tightening it up, you need to tighten opposites first, north-south if you like, and then east-west, or west-east, don't really make any difference, as long as it's opposites. You might go back to that one again, do a little check. 
Do a little check. Do a little check. Do a little check. And the wheel nuts should be about 60 newton meters, about 50 foot pounds. I haven't got a torque wrench here to check it, but um, generally speaking, it's about that much. Okay. One last one. Hello. Oh, look at that, doesn't make any noise at all. Fantastic. <laughs>